Hello everyone. I'm here at my workplace. May I share with you my postpartum pictures with baby and kids? The postpartum or postnatal period begins immediately after childbirth as the mother's body, including hormone levels and uterus size, returns to a non pregnant state. Postpartum period is commonly used to refer to the first six weeks following childbirth. The World Health Organization describes the postnatal period as the most critical and yet the most neglected phase in the lives of mothers and babies. Most maternal and newborn deaths occur during this period. giving birth in hospital may leave as soon as she is medically stable, which can be as early as few hours postpartum, though the average for a vaginal birth is one to two days, the average cesarean section postnatal stay is three to four days. During this time, the mo mother is monitored for bleeding, bowel and bladder function, and baby care. The infant's health is also monitored. Early postnatal hospital discharge is typically defined as discharge of the mother and newborn from the hospital within 48 hours of the birth. The delayed postpartum period starts after the subacute postpartum period and lasts up to six months. During this time, muscles and connective tissue returns to a pre-pregnancy state. May I also share with you here postpartum care from Healthline. The postpartum period can be a very joyous time, but it's also a period of adjustment and healing for mothers. During these weeks, you'll bond with your baby and you'll have a post-delivery checkup with your doctor. Adjusting to everyday life after the birth of a baby has its challenges especially if you're a new mother. Although it's important to care for your baby, you also have to take care of yourself. Most new mothers don't return to work for at least the first six weeks after birth. This allows time to adapt and develop a new normal. Since a baby has to be fed and changed often, you may experience sleepless nights. It can be frustrating and tiresome. The good news is that you'll eventually fall into a routine. In the meantime, here's what you can do for an easier transition. Get plenty of rest. Get as much sleep as possible to cope with tiredness and fatigue. Your baby may wake up every two to three hours for feeding. To make sure you're getting enough rest, sleep when your baby sleeps. Seek help. Don't hesitate to accept help from family and friends during the postpartum period as well as after this period. Your body needs to heal and practical help around the home can help you get much needed rest. Friends or family can prepare meals, run errands, or help care for other children in the home. Eat healthy meals. Maintain a healthy diet to promote healing. Increase your intake of whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and protein. You should also increase your fluid intake, especially if you are breastfeeding. Exercise. Your doctor will let you know when it's okay to exercise. The activity should not be strenuous. Try taking a walk near your house. The change of scenery is refreshing and can increase your energy level. A new baby is an adjustment for the entire family and can change the dynamic you have with your partner. During the postpartum period, you and your partner may also spend less quality time together, which can be troublesome. This is an overwhelming and stressful period, but there are ways to manage. For starters, be patient. Understand every couple goes through changes after the birth of a baby. It takes time to adjust, but you'll figure it out. Caring for a newborn gets easier with each passing day. Also, Communicate as a family. If someone feels left out, whether it's a spouse or other children in the home, talk about the problem and be understanding. 
Other babies require a lot of attention, and you and your partner will spend the majority of the day caring for their needs. Don't feel guilty about spending a long time as a couple during the postpartum period. Baby blues versus postpartum depression. It's normal to have the baby blues during the postpartum period. This typically happens a few days after giving birth and can last for up to two weeks. In most cases, you won't be experiencing symptoms all the time, and your symptoms will vary. About 70-80% to 80% of new mothers experience mood swings or negative feelings after giving birth. Baby blues are caused by the hormonal changes and symptoms may include unexplained crying, irritability, insomnia, sadness, mood changes, restlessness. So, when should you see a doctor? The baby blues are different from postpartum depression. Postpartum depression occurs when symptoms last for more than two weeks. Additional symptoms may include feelings of guilt and worthlessness and loss of interest in daily activities. Some women with postpartum depression withdraw from their family, have no interest in their baby and have thoughts of hurting their baby. Postpartum depression requires medical treatment. Speak with your doctor if you have depression that lasts longer than two weeks after giving birth. Or if you have thoughts of harming your baby, postpartum depression can develop at any time after giving birth, even up to a year after delivery. Coping with body changes. Along with emotional changes, you'll experience body changes after giving birth, such as weight gain. Weight loss doesn't happen overnight, so be patient. Once your doctor says it's okay to exercise, begin with moderate activity a few minutes a day and gradually increase the length and intensity of your workouts. Go for a walk, swim, or join an aerobics class. Losing weight also involves eating healthy, balanced meals that include fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Every new mother loses weight at a different pace. Don't compare your weight loss efforts to others. Breastfeeding can help you return to your pre-pregnancy weight faster because it increases your daily calorie burn. Talk to your doctor if you have questions or concerns about changes to your body during the postpartum period. Other body changes include breast engorgement. Your breasts will fill with milk a couple of days after birth. This is a normal process, but the swelling or engorgement can be uncomfortable. Engorgement improves with time. To ease discomfort, apply a warm or cold compress to your breasts. Sore nipples from breastfeeding usually disappear as your body adjusts. Use nipple cream to soothe cracking and pain. Constipation. Eat high fiber foods to stimulate bowel activity and drink plenty of water. Ask your doctor about safe medications. Fiber can also relieve hemorrhoids as well as over the counter creams or sitting in a sit bath. Drinking water helps ease problems with urinating after birth. If you experience incontinence, Kegel exercises can strengthen your pelvic muscles. Pelvic floor changes. The area between your rectum and vagina is known as the perineum. It stretches and often tears during birth. Sometimes a doctor will cut this area to help your labor. You can help this area recover after your delivery by doing Kegel exercises, icing the area with cold packs wrapped in towels and sitting on a pillow. Sweating. Hormonal changes can cause nighttime sweating after having a baby. Remove blankets from your bed to stay cool. Uterine pain. A shrinking uterus after giving birth can cause cramping. The pain subsides in time. Ask your doctor about safe pain medications. Vaginal discharge. Vaginal discharge is typical two to four weeks after giving birth. This is how your body eliminates blood and tissue from your uterus. Wear sanitary napkins until the discharge stops. You may 
continue to have bloody spotting for your first week postpartum, but heavy bleeding is not expected. If you're experiencing heavy vaginal bleeding, such as saturating one sanitary pad within two hours, contact your doctor. Giving birth can change your family unit and routine, but you'll eventually adjust. Any emotional and physical changes you experience after birth will slowly improve. Don't hesitate to talk to your doctor about any concerns, whether it's related to depression, your baby, or healing process. May I share also with you here a newborn care guide for moms. Caring for a newborn is full of joy, fulfillment, and unconditional love as well as trust. Parents wait anxiously for the day their newborn baby will come into the world with mixed feelings of excitement and apprehension. Parents should learn about basic how to care for newborn care skills, from feeding and bathing their newborn to choosing the right pediatrician, as well as the importance of immunizations or researches of not immunizing the baby. It's a matter of choice. Education from newborn books and these subjects and many other provides confidence for parents that they will most certainly want as well as need. These include newborn care and developmental milestones from birth to six months. Deciding on how and what to feed, how to calm a fuzzy newborn, learning basic care techniques, as well as solving possible problems relating to new baby care are just some of the various subjects parents should educate themselves on. Here are a few basics to remember in handling a newborn. Wash your hands or use a hand sanitizer before handling your baby. Newborns don't have a strong immune system yet, so they are at risk for infection. Make sure that everyone who handles your baby has clean hands. Support your baby's head and neck. Cradle the head when carrying your baby and support the head when carrying the baby upright or when you lay your baby down. Never shake your newborn, whether in play or in frustration. Shaking can cause bleeding in the brain and even death. If you need to wake your infant, don't do it by shaking. Instead, tickle your baby's feet or blow gently on the cheek. Make sure your baby is securely fastened into the carrier, stroller, or car seat. Limit any activity that could be too rough or bouncy. Until next time, thank you for watching and listening. God bless everyone.